Hi there, welcome to the latest episode of my 10 minute rant, 10 minute moon sorry. This one topic is very similar to a topic I dealt with a couple of weeks ago when we had SMP, I think it was MSPs at the time, there was an MP, making outrageous claims about Westminster because the default setting is EU's great, Westminster's bad, you know that narrative. And the Westminster government were moving some jobs from East Kilbride to Glasgow and this woman went after not about Scotland losing jobs. This is a similar one. This involves a SNP candidate for Caithness called Lucy Beatty. Now, Lucy has jumped two feet right in there. He'd first, two feet he'd first, is that even possible? Probably is if you're SNP. And made a complete clown of herself trying to follow the EU is good narrative. Westminster is bad narrative, right? And she's been out campaigning and she's from up north, so she was running about the Keswick Bridge, you know, the one that goes across at um, Inverness. And um, there's a photograph of her and some of her odd looking uh, activists out campaigning. And she's tweeted about this iconic Keswick Bridge, and she was, it was, you know, a, a fond memory of it being built during her youth. And um, how it's a fantastic, in her words, an iconic reminder of EU investment, right? Because apparently the EU built this bridge. So vote for us because we're going to get away from the tyrants in Westminster and we're going to cuddle up again to the EU because they're good people because they built the Keswick Bridge, right? Well, you know the way if you say some shite on Twitter and it's bollocks, they put a community note on it to say, well, what you've said there, excuse me, isn't actually correct, it's inaccurate. Well, she get one of them, right? And let me read you a few facts. 1967, the Scottish Development Department, which was a branch within Westminster government, because there was no Scottish government at the time, started planning to do something for this crossing. It was used to be a ferry crossing up to then. In 1967, you jumped in a ferry if you went north from Inverness. So, in 1967, the Scottish Development Department kicked off the project to make the A9 better, and part of that is this Keswick Bridge, build a bridge. So they started looking into how they were going to do it. And in 1971, it was given approval by the Secretary of State for Scotland. The Secretary of State for Scotland, who is part of the Cabinet for the British Government, at Westminster. He approved that and the budget, right? And the £30 million, £27 now there was a lot of money in the bridge, I think it was about £17 million in the bridge and the rest was like infrastructure around about it, right? There was one grant for three grand, three million quid out of the £30 million quid that didn't come from the UK government, right? So UK government paid 90% of this, but here's the kicker. See this bridge that was completed in 1982, 1982, so 67, we need one, 71, approved, 82, complete, and young Lucy Beatty can remember it visibly in her iconic reminder of EU investment, the EU was formed in 1993, a crackpot, right, <laughs> so, where are we, right, this maniac, genuinely thinks that EU paid for it. Now, she would not have a clue, pro well, obviously not got a clue that the EU wasn't formed until 1993. What this crackpot's been doing is just listening. She's indoctrinated into this absolute cult that the SNP is now, that everything about Westminster's bad and everything about the EU is good. She's now talking about one of the most iconic modern infrastructures in the north of your country, and genuinely believes the shite that the EU built it. This woman's trying to become a, a member of parliament. Do you know what I mean? Where are they from? I was just talking to his, um, a pal of my, my, my workmate and my, my pals just, just today about the problem that SNP's got. And it's definitely, they've got a skill pool problem. They genuinely must have a skill pool problem. The last story that we had that was similar to this was the crackpots that thought taking jobs out East Kilbride when, was, was taking jobs out of Scotland when they were going to a place in Glasgow, five minutes up the road, right? They obviously had a geography problem, right? 
Lucy obviously has a has a history. Aye, a history problem, and probably no great grasp of arithmetic because she thinks a barrage built in 1982 was funded by an organisation that wasn't formed until 1993. So it's just another example, not only of jumping on the narrative all the time, the EU good, Westminster bad narrative, but this to me just proves this cult theory. It's brainwashing. It doesn't matter what you're talking about, right? It, it could be the colour of my top. And they would say, aye, well, that, that, that's a nice blue, that now. But Westminster think that's a rubbish blue. But see, we get independence and we join the EU again, we, we'll, we'll start saying that, that'll be a nice colour of blue again. It's just absolute bedlam, isn't it? No, this lassie. I, I, I genuinely don't know if Kate Ness is a safe seat for her or a, a shoe in or a really tough seat. I, don't, I, I genuinely don't know. I, I, I could find out in 10 minutes and look at it, but it doesn't make any difference. The, the facts are, she's been put up as a candidate for this party. That is the quality of people that they've got. And I was, as I say, I was talking to, um, I was in at my mate's uh, business, I was talking to one of his colleagues about it just, just today. And their skill pool is horrific. They could probably do, you know the way they're talking about maybe no turning up at Westminster? That'd be a great idea. Do you know what you should do? Don't even stand for election at Westminster, right? Because you don't have enough good people in your party to fill seats in one building, never mind to try to fill another 20, 30 in another. You, you probably don't have enough quality people, quality politicians, to fill the high 30s, 40-odd seats you've got in Westminster. You'd probably struggle it because half the ones doing there you've got representing Scotland are absolute yahoos, right? They don't have a clue what they're doing. Might be the odd one or two down there that's all right. But you've then got all the seats in the Scottish Parliament to fill as well. And your party just don't have the skill and the brain power within it to cover all these, these seats. You could probably do yourself a favour by emptying one of the parliaments and try and get more think about it. You would probably be better just putting your good ones into Westminster or trying to get them a seat there. And forgetting about the Scottish Parliament. Just have that for your councils. You know, they, they, they're, they're probably as, as... I mean, they can't count either, right? So they would have no comprehension of who built and who paid for a bridge either. So you wouldn't be any worse by putting your councils into the Scottish Parliament and just try to get all your good people, you could maybe get, you know, the polls are right, you're going to get about 20 seats at the next election. You could probably get, maybe a push, get about 20 folk, good ones. You know, like and people that know the difference between Glasgow being in Scotland and East Kilbride, moving from East Kilbride to Glasgow, isn't they taking your jobs out of Scotland? You know, those kids, people, you probably get 20. It's maybe, worth a, it's maybe worth a revisit at one point, to be fair, about looking into that. But there you go, Lucy Beatty, yeah. A potential parliamentarian for the Scottish National Party genuinely thinks a bridge built in 1982 <laughs> was paid for by a body that didn't exist until a decade later and tells you there was need that Westminster didn't fund that. This is an iconic reminder of EU investment. An iconic reminder of EU investment if you own a DeLorean and went back in time. Right, and took the dough for 1992 and somehow managed to drop it into when the invoices came in in 1982 for this iconic reminder of EU investment. Anyway, I just love um, commenting about the SMP, so I've been doing it now for November every day, and they just can't fail to give me material. Just absolutely bemused. I'll tell you what I do, I get up in the morning or last thing at night and I Google SMP and I click news and then I put it into order. And you see that from the latest stories backwards. There's no a day passes that I can't find something to laugh at them about or be angry about when it's things like, you know, um, £11,000 phone bills and, st and stuff like that. And then all the serious stuff like Humza overriding. Um, by the way, I might have more about that story soon. You know, the FOI had done that proved that uh, Humza had overrode the, overturned, sorry, the decision by the Scottish ministers on where the money was to go for Gaza. 
Aye. I've got, a, I've got some stuff waiting to come up with that. I've got some more information on that, which I'll be able to share with you once I get everything all confirmed up in the next three or four days. But, aye, good. Anyway, listen, unless you're Lucy Beatty, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and get involved in the comments. Always good for a chortle in there. Um, and again, unless you're Lucy Beatty, have a great day. Cheerio, bye now.